And this morning, people are being told to stay away from the remains of a rocket that exploded just after liftoff. Investigators are collecting wreckage from the spacecraft built and operated by a private company. Its stock price fell more than 16% on Wednesday after the disaster. Chip Reed is at the launch site on Wallops Island. That's along Virginia's eastern shore. Chip, good morning. Well, good morning. A top executive of Orbital, the company that owned this rocket, told me they hope to determine the cause within a week. In the meantime, it has refocused attention on two controversial issues. First, NASA's increasing reliance on private companies, and second, the use of old Russian engines. And we have liftoff. As Orbital's Antares rocket lifted off, it looked like a perfect launch. Then the unthinkable happened. Oh, God! It was suddenly engulfed in flames and exploded in a massive ball of fire, sending shockwaves for miles. The uh, water tower there. The company's executive vice president, Frank Culbertson, is a former space shuttle commander and was this mission's director. So when you saw that explosion, what went through your mind? Well, my heart went in my throat. I mean, uh, we all have a lot invested in this, both professionally and emotionally, and it's hard to watch a failure like that. Tuesday's flight was the third of eight under a $1.9 billion contract with NASA. Another company, SpaceX, is preparing for its next launch to the International Space Station in December. Some critics question NASA's reliance on private companies to resupply the space station. Culbertson disagrees. Business can actually make a business out of it and continue to provide uh, transportation transportation to space so NASA can continue to explore further and further into the solar system. Orbital executives said Wednesday they still don't know the cause of the explosion, but some outside experts speculate the rocket's engines made in what was then the Soviet Union more than 40 years ago could be to blame. They've got a long flight record in Russia and uh, it was a good deal at the time and I think that uh, you know hindsight's a 2020 sort of a proposition here and with the failure you can think twice about it. Bill Harwood, a longtime space consultant for CBS News, says reliance on Russian-made engines is prevalent in the industry because it's more cost-effective. Just yesterday, the Atlas V, which uses a Russian engine, took off from Cape Canaveral in a flawless launch. But dependence on Russia has some in the industry wanting to change course. Given the heightened concern about the use of Russian rocket engines and U.S. rockets, there, there clearly is a, a move afoot to replace those with uh, U.S. alternatives. However, it's not going to be fast. It's not going to be cheap. Orbital says it completely refurbishes those old Russian engines and tests them repeatedly. But in a test last May, one of them exploded. The Orbital executives say it's too early to tell if the engines caused this crash, but they don't rule it out. Nora? All right, Chip, thank you.